I went to 10 schools in 12 grades, which it's a lot of schools. It's a lot of schools. And um, we moved around a lot in different houses. We were renters. We were lifelong renters, you know. So lifelong renters come with their own sort of obsessive moves. So my dad had the grass is always greener on the other side, okay? So we're moving from place to place to place. And then my mom had the rental house is greener on the other side. So even within the same neighborhood, we could possibly shift homes. You know, so you had a little bit of that. What comes with it are good things and not so good things. But one of the good things that comes from it is that you meet a lot of people. Um, you're coming and going all of the time. And you have to find out how to be with people. If you're going to make friends, make friends quickly. You have to have some skills for doing this, you know. You have to face up to people. You have to, and being able to tell stories or talk, you know. You can't just be like the new kid who walks silently to your person's door, knocks, and doesn't say anything. You've got to have a shtick. So that really helped, you know, to like get some personality going. My sister had a journal, had a little diary, and she would write in it. And uh, I was kind of a copycat, you know, like a younger brother type. And so I would watch her, and I thought, dang, she's so good at that, you know. And then I thought, well, if I read it, you know, I'll probably be as smart as she is, because she was always smarter than me. And so then uh, I did read. I read her diary. It was a terrible, unethical thing to do, but I was compelled. And so um, I read it, and it wasn't terribly interesting to me. I mean, I'm not trying to run my sister down, but it, it seemed to me that she was missing all the richness of life. Here we were moving from western Pennsylvania to Cape Hatteras, to Barbados, to St. Lucia, you know, to Miami, you know, lots going on. And all these neighborhoods we would live in, all these crazy characters, and none of that made the diary. And I thought, that's really peculiar, because the world I'm living with, in the end, it's really interesting. So I got a diary, and then I started like keeping notes, and then I started trying to set the diaries up in such a way that they would be, well, they would help me get started. You know, because that blank page, you know when you look at that blank page and you put that on the desk or open a diary, it's really hard. It's intimidating. It's begging you to improve upon it, and it's hard. Every time you put that pencil down, you've sort of sullied the page. So then I did this thing. First, I'm a reader. You know, I was a good reader. So I'd read Harriet the Spy. And Harriet the Spy had a diary, and she walked around the neighborhood spying on everyone. And I thought, that is the greatest job in the world. I want that job, spy, you know, because I was good at looking in windows. And so, um, so I went out, and I got a big sheet of paper, and I drew a spy map of my neighborhood. And then I started drawing, down, drawing where everything interesting happened, you know, the, the low supervision family over here and you know my family and where my dog was eaten by an alligator in Florida and where the other one you know was hit by a car where the third one dug a hole ran around the house fell in broke his neck we buried him in the hole he dug and the little things like that all that kind of stuff and then I would write you know I would open it up see that map and knew right away that I could focus on those stories and write those stories. Ron Ralph is a big red cat uh, runs around on two hind legs and uh, has an owner named Sarah and Sarah's very sweet and kind and thoughtful and and sympathetic and Ralph of course has very little conscience he's momentarily contrite from time to time and he just is like that kind of out of control cat he forgets to be good at any rate so I had this cat first off let me just back up before I wrote Ralph Nicole Rubel, who is the illustrator of the Ron Ralph books, is a fabulous illustrator. She was at the Museum School of Fine Arts in Boston. I was at Emerson College in Boston. I'm getting my degree in writing. She's doing her art thing. We meet at a party. We decide we both like children's literature, so we decide to make these little dummy books and get them published. So right off the bat, I'm writing the world's worst books. You know, I'm writing like a visit to grandmother's house. Little girl takes a plant to the grandmother. They dust the plant. They water the plant. They name the plant. They plant the plant turned down. It's all rejected. I'm like, gee, that's a genius book. How'd that happen? You know? So then I, you know, I'm writing a lot of these books and I don't know, I think, I think in one sense too, you know, because I had that little prison thing behind me, I really didn't want to cut loose. I wanted to like kind of imitate nice books for children. Finally, after, oh, probably a, a dozen well-deserved uh, rejections, um, I thought, well, you know, I might as well just swing my cat, you know, because, and be me, you know. So I wanted to write a book about a cat. 
So I thought, well, you know, there's this rule of writing called write about what you know about. So I thought, okay, I'll get a cat. Now I'm living in a rooming house. I live in one room. It's about 10 feet long, about five feet wide, and that's it, right there, in a rooming house on Marlborough, Marlborough Street in Boston. So I open up the Boston Globe, go to the pet section. There's cat, you know, you know, cat giveaway, and so it's from Harvard University. You know, got to get rid of a nice cat. So I'm like, oh, I might as well get a smart one. So I call the people up. They're from Australia. They've had this cat, they've got, they finished their degree, and they're moving back. I go and get the cat. Make a long story short, the cat is a sociopathic, vicious animal. And, you know, never liked me. I mean, that cat, no matter where he was in that room, could leap and, and really sink his nails into me. And so I'm sitting in the room, I've got this vicious thing scratching out my legs, just hating me, never liked anyone. Of course, I never had anyone over to the room because it was so pathetic. And so, Anyway, I thought, you know, instead of writing about sweet fluffy, you know, I'm going to go the other way. So I take Rotten Ralph to the first one, Atlantic Monthly. And finally she reads it and she looks at me and she goes, never come back here again. And I walked out of there and I thought, dang, I'm getting better. You know, because he just felt like boy, if, if it revolted them that much, something's working, right? So. Then I took it up uh, the hill to Atlantic, no, to uh, Little Brown at the top of Beacon Hill. So um, I showed it to the editor and he read it. It just wasn't for him, you know. Then we took it over to Hode Mifflin and Walter Lorraine, who is just retiring. He's 80 years old. He's retiring. And uh, he's still there. And he read it and he went, I like the cat. I like this part. Write a new story. So I was like, whoa, that's the most encouragement I've ever had. So I went home, and then I wrote a brand new story like overnight, took it back. He went, like that line, like that line, like that line, get rid of the rest. I'd keep these lines, write a new one. I must have done that 50 times. I swear it took the whole summer. I would just rewrite furiously every night. And, you know, finally at the end of the summer, he said, you know what, I think you need a contract for this. And we got, finally got a contract for it. And Boy, that was the first book. And I remember, so I'm standing in Park Street in Boston, right by the Boston Common, which I walk by that way every day on my way to the library. And I look at that spot on the street where I was just like dancing in the middle of the street, jumping up and down. And it still feels that good every time I see it. You know, that all that hard work, all that revision, all that thinking, all that goal chasing, you know, was totally, totally worth it. The Reading Rockets Meet the Author series is a production of WETA. Major funding for Reading Rockets comes from the United States Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs. For more author interviews, recommended reading lists, and information about teaching kids to read, please visit us online at www.readingrockets.org.